Welcome, everyone. My name is Carmen Acevedo Butcher. I'm delighted you're here. I want to read for you today something that's just been released, a piece titled Sailing Through This to That, after a Lucille Clifton poem's line. Recently, for the Blue Mountain Review, December 2023 issue, I was asked by its editor-in-chief, Clifford Brooks, to write the introduction. And this is that introduction. Sailing through this to that. And thanks again to Cliff Brooks for the invitation. Sailing through this to that by Carmen... Acevedo Butcher, read by the author. Wide and open-eyed in our liminal month, I feel the need to summon words for healing. If you've ever heard a poet read and your world was changed forever, you know. I heard Lucille Clifton read at Georgia Tech with Thomas Lux in 2002. Restored and inspired, I wrote a poem for her. I typed it up carefully added a handwritten note. Your poetry means so much to me. Your courage. I teach at a small college in the town of your mother's birth. And so forth. I mailed my love with a stamp and forgot until I got a phone call at my office. It was Lucille Clifton's personal assistant saying, Is this Carmen? Yes. Lucille Clifton wanted me to thank you for sending her that lovely poem. My total fangirling was answered by kindness. I also caught kindness from my gentlest school teachers. This also saved me. It's near impossible to capture how it feels struggling to read a sterile, opaque, standardized test passage in school as... Words are glide-stepping like marching band members to an invisible drum major who's drilling a shrill, commanding whistle. Fweet! Watch D's and B's swap places. Fweet! Now no and no collide. Now and one slide. How and who switch spots. Fweet! Spy C's, which are really S's, and words like access and assess becomes... Labrinths. This wordy mess wasn't just mechanical either. Dyslexia disrupted my sense of self. Being undiagnosed made it worse. Ashamed, I told no one. Convinced, I was dumb. Dyslexia made reading then so undoable, I felt I was going crazy. I mean crazy's original definition quote, a person affected by mental illness, and not the colloquial one, quote, wildly foolish. The Oxford English Dyslexia discourages both uses today, kindly reminding us, quote, now offensive. Today, I understand it like this. My dyslexia contributed significantly to my severe anxiety and underlying sense of utter inferiority growing up. Dyslexia is also why I began studying words' backstories. Their etymologies stopped words from being just abstract things to memorize for scary SAT analogy questions like, all caps, paltry is to significance as A, redundant is to discussion, B, austere is to landscape, C, Opulent is to wealth. D, oblique is to familiarity. E, banal is to originality. Although prep scholars Samantha Lindsay declares E correct, you could be forgiven if rushed for selecting D, oblique is to familiarity. And I'd much rather know oblique's roots in Latin for toward, bent upward, from ob and licinus and Banal's history and feudalism, which explains a lot. 
Also factor in that my family lived in a rural area and my mother made my clothes, so analogy questions could make me feel second rate. These have since been removed owing to their bias toward a higher social class. Lindsay gives one example, again, all caps, runner is to marathon as A, envoy is to embassy, B, martyr is to massacre, C, oarsman is to regatta, D, referee is to tournament, E, horse is to stable. Cognizant of cornfields, cotton mill, working neighbors, and chicken houses, my teenage self would have missed that C, oarsman is to regatta. These complex hurdles made standardized tests harrowing. It's taken me a long time to understand and even a longer time to say. I am disabled. I always have been. Dyslexia complicates and obstructs my daily life. Always I prepare out the wazoo and still my mind might stumble and mix up words when I speak or write. It takes me infinities to do things, and while the efforts are very worth it to me, I wish the world had more tenderness for such. In the absence of that, daily I wake up and intend to have more compassion for myself and for others. Because you never know what struggles someone is having, right? Understanding my limping, limpid mind is also ongoing, ever evolving. It grants me insights into learning difficulties my students increasingly seem to experience. When someone's having a hard time getting a concept that seems clear to me, I practice remembering all this and that I was the third grade kid who could hardly read yet wrote books. For these reasons, I remain mindful of the kindness Lucille Clifton gave me. However small, any gentleness means us and the world. I am also grateful that she ended her reading at Tech with her poem, Blessing the Boats. Its calm sureness moves us with the shamanic power of words to heal. She knew our world is founded, foundered by power, like King Charles I chartered 400-ton arcs and 40-ton doves, 140 colonists with their 13 slaves debarking at St. Clement's Island, 40 minutes from Clifton St. Mary's College, where her poem's title conjures the island's ritual fall, blessing of the fleet. Even after all the years and fears and hurts and abuse and illness, cancers, kidney failure, dialysis for Clifton, and the to-come unknowns, her poem, Blessing the Boats, revives our hope in the liminal tide. It reassures us love has our back, even knowing all we are. Clint Clifton chants, quote, open your eyes, and gives us her blessing, quote, may you in your innocence sail through this to that. My dyslexic, etymologically inclined noose hears the word innocence saying to us, do not, that's the N prefix, do not, nocere or noxa, for harm nor be obnoxious. So my dyslexic, etymologically inclined noose hears innocence saying to us, the word innocence saying to us, do not harm nor be obnoxious. May we thrive together in this growing wise kindness of Clifton's blessing. Blessing the boats at St. Mary's. 
May the tide that is entering even now, the lip of our understanding, carry you out beyond the face of fear. May you kiss the wind and turn from it, certain that it will love your back. May you open your eyes to water, water waving forever, and may you, in your innocence, sail through this to that. Happy New Year, everyone. Blessings on you, your family, your friends, all your beloveds, all those you meet, all others, and our egret, blessed earth. May we care for earth and earth's sacredness and see how interconnected we all are. Thank you for listening. Much love to all. Carmen.